following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the October 11th, the magical Monday edition of today's Trader's Zed Show. I'm your host, Stevie. Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, that's this. During this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in at 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, we've got you covered there, too. Go ahead. Send me an email. Send it to steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question in, in our Tiger's Den. Any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Magical Monday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Les Show. Right now, we've got a mixed bag out here. Dow's off 46. S&P now down 5. Semis are off 7. Rutzel's up 2. Semis are up 2. Um, basically, flat-ish style markets out there. Gold's off about 2 bucks. Silver down in nickel lights. We crewed up a buck 70. Leading the charge dollar-wise, the upside, you got micro strategy up 27 bucks. Solar Edge up 19. That's 7%. HubSpot 12. About 2%. Aspen Technology. Nearly 9%, uh, $12.50. The downside, dollar-wise, it's Amazon, 35 bucks. Decker's Outdoor, 25 Mercado Libre, 20 Aero Century Corp off 11 or 18%. ACM Research down 9% or 10 buckaroonies. Let's begin the day with John in Philly. John, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you doing today? How was your weekend? It was uh, very nice. Hope yours was the same. And, Steve, it's... It's always a delight to uh, begin uh, talking the week and markets with uh, you or Thank you. one of your TFNN colleagues. So uh, thanks for taking the call. My pleasure. And was it the ES that you wanted to start with? Uh... Very specific question, Steve, regarding the S&P 500, NASDAQ 100, and their, under and, excuse me, and their uh, derivative futures contracts, the specifically both of these indices now are in the sixth week after record highs were made. And, of course, we've pulled back. Mm -hmm. we've, uh, you have documented very well that a significant decline phase is not yet proven. Uh, one of the key reasons I've heard you say this repeatedly in past weeks is just price action versus the weekly chart has profiles, yes. namely prices come down to test it and held the bottom of the weekly TAS profile without closing underneath for your benchmark of two consecutive weeks. So that's history. That's where we stand now. <clears throat> Is there right. anything you're looking at or that's percolating in your mind that's gives you a guesstimate of when and if price will decline decisively under the bottom of those weekly TAS profiles and signal to us a definitive decline phase? So let's try to let's try to uh, answer that question by looking at the charts here. And so folks, the uh, first chart, although there's a set of four, that you're looking at if you're watching us on Tiger TV is something that John had a reference and that was the weekly time frame. Now the only thing that I'm showing on this set of four weekly charts are the bottom 
of the weekly profiles. The reason is, is because at the bottom of a profile, that is where sellers are present. The top, I'm sorry, buyers are at. The top is where sellers are at. The center is where both buyers and sellers are. But the most important thing, and John was alluding to it, he specifically stated that I haven't made this, I haven't made a call or the market, I should say, the task market profiles have not given us a signal of an intermediate term change in trend. Now, we've got all four equity future contracts here. Uh, two weeks ago, the NQ, the bottom of that uh, weekly profile is 14,802. The close uh, from the week that began September 27th was 14,761. So that was a close below it. Last week's close was 14,808. The bottom of that profile is 14,802. So we did not get the two consecutive closes below that level. If we did get two consecutive closes, John, then I would have to say that there is at least a change in trend in the NQ. We would anticipate if we're going to see a change in trend in the overall markets, we would see the bottom of the weekly profile uh, give itself up both for the uh, for the NQ, the ES, the YM, and the Russell 2000. And that just simply hasn't happened. Now, so what does that mean? Well, I then go back. So it's, what that means to me is we don't have a confirmed change in trend. It's always important, and I, I'm sure you'll agree with this, to understand the type of market that we are trading in. And when I pull the carpet back or I pull the rug back a little bit, look underneath the covers out here, what I see are are very clear consolidation patterns inside of each of the four equity futures contracts. And those are represented by these rectangles here. And so the cool thing about a consolidation pattern is that once that it breaks, once we have a breakthrough to the upside or to the downside, what it does is it provides us with a measured move. So that's another thing that I'm paying attention to. What market are we in right now or what the, what are the markets communicating to us? We're in sideways consolidation. What else has been communicated to us? We don't have a confirmed change in trend based upon closing below the bottom of a weekly profile. What new piece of information has arrived? Well, the new piece of information that arrived early this morning, John, it's not shown here. Where did I see that? Hold on. So I wonder if it's changed. Uh, give me a moment here, if you would. Uh, what I was going to try to show, okay, it, it has shifted. So what I what I can just simply share with you right now, John, I can't show it to you on the screen because it has gone away. And that is this, that the Dow Equity Future contract is attempting to form a new daily profile. And I'm using my advanced Doppler tool out here, and it doesn't show anything. So I'm just going to show you what was or going to share with you what signal it generated for us earlier this morning. Again, the profile hasn't formed yet, but I know that it's attempting to form out there. And that signal, John, was where the bottom of the new daily profile for the Dow was below the current profile. And the new resistance level for that new profile, again, hasn't formed out here, so now I'm talking about air, I suppose, was above the top of the profile. That is a signal of a market that is also trying to consolidate. So overall, and I want to come back to you now, and I would like you to also wait through the break out here, because I'd, I'd like to hear from you, if possible, is I'm getting a signal of consolidating markets. And, and that's what I see out there. Uh, so we've got about 20 seconds uh, if you wanted to maybe throw something out uh, to us. But, but please wait through the break, if you would. Be happy to, Steve. Thank you. Okay, all right. So we'll be back with, with John in just a few minutes. The other element out here, John, that I'm paying close attention to as well and uh, is really that spot volatility, 50-day exponential moving average. And I'll finally get back to the last thing. I really think making a call on the markets is going to be all about the NQ. Um, and I can explain that when we get back from this break. So this is Steve Rhodes with John in Philly. We'll be back in about three minutes. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered 
every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. We're on the line with John in Philly. And so, John, during that last segment, I gave you, you know, a lot to throw out at there, uh, out at you and, and everybody else. Uh, so I'm, I'm interested in your observations as well as any other questions that maybe arose from the information that I shared so far. Yeah, Steve, just, uh, just a couple of quick conclusions. One, I'm very much like you in not uh, jumping the gun to predict something that's not yet proven. Yeah, And the fact that uh, price, the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100 have come down, tested, and held those TAS weekly profile, the bottoms thereof, I will just sit and wait for a break of those levels decisively. Yes. Uh, throw in on top of that your tool of your consolidation patterns – that you just uh, displayed with those nice rectangular uh, formations with the measured move projections that we that would be given if in fact price declines and takes out those lows of I guess that would be October 1st and Monday October 4th. Yes. And just yes. to keep it real simple that measured move projection if, in fact, that uh, October 1st low is broken, that's down near that 4275 level, that just gives you just a nice round number projection of 4,000 on the S&P. So I will look and use that as a reference point uh, before uh, jumping the gun in my own mind saying, boy, we've got much greater downside directly yeah. ahead of us. What I will share just fundamentally in market mechanic wise is of course back in late 2020 kind of I think it'd be fair to say 
somewhere around the time of the presidential election, the character of the market changed in this sense, that money flows into U.S. equities surged. And I must confess, I don't trust my own uh, data input, but I've seen enough input from uh, research houses like Bank America, Merrill Lynch, and Goldman Sachs saying that year-to-date 2021 inflows into U.S. equities have been, and I don't want to throw around numbers Mm -hmm. because I'll misquote it. I don't have them in front of me, but something to the tune of figures like between 500 billion and 1 trillion. Mm -hmm. And whether, where that money is coming from, I I lack the confidence to talk intelligently about that. Suffice it to say the money flows have been huge. Number two, the money flowing in and around the options market, options on equities, options on equity indices, are huge and and have been growing, but are at levels that have never been seen before. Mm-hmm. So, look, looking forward, two things strike me based upon those uh, those pieces of data. One, if it continues, and I don't know if it will or it won't, but if it continues at unprecedented levels, that certainly would be the fuel to result in this pullback merely being a consolidation and mm-hmm. headed to higher highs at some point in the future. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Alternatively, this surge in participation in equity ownership itself, whether it's mutual funds or something else, or a combination thereof, and the options uh, market via call option purchasing, if in fact That is the uh, typical Basil Chapman coda phase phenomenon. Mm -hmm. We could easily understand how, in fact, that is late money, excuse me, that is fast money coming to the party late that makes your quintessential top, that finds themselves in the position where they bought the highs and then in the, the phrase of, you know, Tom O'Brien, are trapped like rats. Yes. And, and in fact, start to liquidate big time upon break of support that leads to a much larger decline phase. Mm-hmm. So those are the things that are percolating around my, my mind, and I'll just wait for the bottom of that uh, consolidation, those October 1st and 4th lows, and your measured move projection targets, if they come into play on the week, and the, excuse me, the the price levels, the bottom of the TAS weekly market profiles. And I, just to reiterate, I think you said on the NQ futures that was fourteen eight hundred, and on the uh, S and P futures that was down near four three hundred. Right, correct, correct. Well, you Excellent. know, so. You'd be, yeah, and, and you mentioned capital flows, and there's a couple. Of, there's a number of different ways that we can always take a look at at those capital flows. Uh, this chart I find to be of interest here, uh, at least because it helps to support. So we talked about, or they, they always refer to the dot com bubble into the 2000 top as being just that, caused by uh, just excess cash that was just going after that. But the reality is, what was also taking place at that time, it was more likely the reason to see that big, huge run up into that top into 2020 was capital. Flow in Europe. And we could just look at that just simply by taking a look at the currency pair, the currency pair of the euro versus the U.S. dollar. And so I've got that articulated here. We can see that really since 2008, since we've had our rally off the 2009 bottom, we've seen euros or capital fleeing Europe. And it does nothing when I take a look at my charts for the euros. There's nothing to indicate that uh, that's going to that we've hit a bottom or that we've come to an end here. So uh, we're in this favorable seasonal cycle. We're in this consolidating pattern. They're hard to, it's the best pattern I've been able to identify out there to help me understand what's going on with the markets and then those support levels out there. But what we could see here, because we're in that favorable seasonal cycles, we could see a big move higher, a gigantic slingshot move higher. Now, the preference there would be to see something, some shock to the system to move lower. 
So in asking what would be the ideal setup, I don't think it's right now because I don't see a lot of people that are would be afraid to dip their toe into the equity markets. But if we do get a big pullback here, uh, let's say the one that would break that uh, uh, the through the TAS profiles, create a measured move to give us some type of price projection, uh, then I think that would really be the more ideal setup for the slingshot to the upside. But right now, uh, you know, where are people going to put their money? Are you going to put it in debt instruments? And if you are, I can understand that. Just put it in debt instruments that are backed by U.S. corporations versus governments across the globe. Y your thoughts on that? Uh, that, uh, that storytelling, Steve, makes perfect sense to me. There's nothing I can detract nor add to that. It's pretty complete as far as I see it. So I will bid you adieu. Okay, Thanks so much great. for all your work and your time today. Appreciate that. You bet, John. Always good to speak to you. That was John in uh, Philly. Uh, let me just check real quickly here, folks, and see if I've got any requests that have come in. The only request is another one from inside the Tiger's Den, and that was from SNP. And SNP wanted to take a look at the ticker symbol here is Riot. R-I-O-T. So real quickly here before we go to this break, if we take a look at Riot Blockchain, uh, finding resistance say a nice day, but right up to the top of that daily profile, 2903. That's your resistance level. Price can close above that for two consecutive closes. Riot Blockchain on his way to 3683. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. So we're still looking at Riot, a blockchain, R-I-O-T, is the uh, ticker symbol. This is the white background daily chart. What we can see here is uh, the last two bottoms formed with TD9 counts, and then the uh, most recent one from about four or five days ago was wave number seven. That's letter G. That's courtesy of a portion of the uh, Chapman wave out there, but it is not the Chapman wave. It's just the one count that we take a look at. So here's what we know. We know price is trading inside a bullish structured profile. We've got a valid bottoming signal. Resistance says 2903. We don't have a clue as to whether resistance is going to be taken out or not. But if 2903 has got a valid bottom, if the price closes above 2903, does it for two consecutive sessions, that would signal that Riot should target the 3829 level. 3829 is where it most recently broke down. That's on the daily time frame. The weekly chart, as we take a look at it, the weekly chart is also trading with inside a bullish structured weekly profile profile. Now here, what price needs to do on a weekly basis is it close above the center. And the center line there is out at the 2804 level. And if price can do that, the next resistance area would be 3220. It closed above 3220, 3683. It closed above 3683. We're looking at 6155. We're not making that call to 6155 right now. Those are just simply the parameters and the next resistance points. But price has got its work cut out for it right now. 3219. Again, the oscillator and change line for the weekly time frame. There's nothing to look at on the monthly, so we'll just leave it right there. SNP looks like you're going to good good trade here. You just got a battle. And you know where that level, that first level is at, and that's at the 2903 area. That takes care of all the questions that we have inside the uh, Tiger's Den. And by email and by phone, you can give us a call at 877-927-6648. Let's uh, tinker around a little bit. Let's go take a look at the advanced decline oscillator reading inside the New York Stock Exchange. So this is day three above the zero threshold line. The advanced decline oscillator is the second panel. Uh, the bottom panel is spot volatility. Index. We like to see where that's trading. Uh, now, when things are aligned, then markets can move to the north. In this case here, the advanced decline oscillator is above zero. That's a bullish directional signal out there. If we take a look at the spot volatility, index, well, it is trading right now. The spot volatility index is trading at 1952, and the 50 day expense moving average is 1945. So things are not aligned. As we speak at the moment, because you need that spot volatility to be below that 50-day expense moving average in order for the New York Stock Exchange to gain any traction to the upside. So you've got one bullish signal, one bearish signal. What does that mean? Basically, flat markets, really what we're in right now. What else is that we can share with you? Um, as far as signals, I, I saw I, I, I mentioned this to John during that uh, first and second segment where we're taking a look at just simply the equity markets here. I, I, I did mention that I believe it's really primarily all about the NQ, that that's, you know, it's nice if we can try to narrow things down uh, to help us provide signals. So in that first and second uh, session of the of today's show, uh, what we did, what John and I did nail down, really a couple different levels, the T level being the bottom of those weekly profiles, the first thing that price has to close below in order to signal to us a change of trend, and then the consolidation patterns, which if those get broken because their levels of support are below those areas out there, below the bottom of the weekly profiles, that then gives us a price target. Now, the indice that is struggling, all four equity future contracts have confirmed Gartley buy patterns. The NQ was the most recent one uh, or the latest one to form. And that just happened a few days ago with this hammer candle on October 6th. Now, if price closes below that hammer candle out there, well, one, the Gartley buy pattern will have failed. Two, when you close below the bottom of a hammer candle, the expression we like to use here is if you're long, you're wrong. Well, what does that really mean? It means you go down to the next support level. So where's the next support level? Pretty easy for us to identify that. It's 13. 945.75. Not a single one of us, now we'll put my name at the top of the list, would ever have picked that data point, 139.45.75, as a breakout level. It's just not taught anywhere. Where it is taught is it comes with the TD9 system out there. And just, oh, you're not seeing the chart. My apology. Um, thank you, Mr. Bill, my wingman out there. What I need, Bill, Mr. Bill, we got to work on getting that two by four that you could just simply slide through that uh, screen of yours and just whack me upside the head just to let me know. I know it's already, hey, stop talking about Steve. Would you just change to the chart out there so I can see it? Yes, there we go. So there's the chart for the NQ. So there is the daily chart here for the NQ. We'll go back and take a look at some other balsa. Would. Uh, also wouldn't be fine, but uh, eggs, a hard two by four, no problem. Uh, this this head has been uh, hit a few times. In any event, out here, you can see, or you should be able to see the A to B equals CD. I've, I've drawn that in with those uh, blue lines out there, and what you're looking for is some type of bullish reversal candle to confirm that pattern. Now, we've got the bottom out here, but what we don't have is any kind of um, 
of uh, a price closing above key resistance, which happens to be, in this instance here, and you can see it at operation, the oscillator and change line. Now, you can see that this had changed colors maybe about six, seven, eight trading sessions ago. And when it changes color, what that tells us, it communicates that at that very moment, the price oscillator, and that's the difference between the 39 and exponential, the 39 to 19 period exponential moving average out there, is that price oscillator, for price that is, it's called a price oscillator, uh, is right at zero. Now, I can't tell you why this worked. Not because I can't tell you, because I can't tell you. You know the difference between the two. But what I do know is that when it does happen, what the odds favor occurring next over the coming sessions. And what occurs next over the coming sessions is price gets up to that oscillator and change line. Now, when it has changed colors from green to red and you can't take it out, that is not a bullish message. That is a bearish message out there. Why? Because we still have then a falling price oscillator because it's red, it's below zero, and that is what creates, that is what creates, uh, directionally speaking, um, a market that should go south. Now, if this goes south, where are we looking at? Well, certainly the bottom of its profile in the 14,470 area would be a place to look. We want to look at the intraday charts and other things out here. But what I can share with you is if we did see the NQ close above that oscillator and change line, currently printed at 14,859. But what we'll do is we say, because we know there's resistance not that much further above it, and that's at the 14,986 level. If price closes above 14,986, does it for two consecutive uh, sessions out there, we're certainly going to go back, or we should go back and test the 15,400 area. That's the high, approximate high from, uh, what was it, September 27th. And above that, you get back to the all-time highs out there. Now, we are in the favorable seasonal cycle. So that is uh, certainly more than a likely outcome, but it still has to prove itself to us. And in the NQ, we take a look at the daily time frame. It has not done that. Now, we look at other time frames out here. The only time frame this morning that I could find that was identifying uh, some type of uh, bounce or bottom uh, was the 30-minute chart for the NQ. That's in the upper left hand, right hand corner. In fact, let me just expand that out for us, just so we're only looking at one thing. When it did make its top most recently, that was back at about 12:30, back on October 7th. That was a Rhodes Momentum Indicator System pattern out here, and we had the exact same thing taking place this morning uh, at uh, 8:30. And what price did? It looked like price was really going. It, Really, in, in one half hour, took out that resistance of that TD9 breakdown level, and the second close was above it, for, uh, and that was it being 14.850. And But we also saw that right after that, that oscillator and change line for its 30-minute time frame chart changed colors too. What did that set up? That set up that eventual test. That eventual test was taking place during the 1 to 1.30 session. Now, price closed below it, and it's green still. So that tells us the price oscillator is above zero. But price is below that, so it's above zero, but it's falling. And uh, that would say we've got to find the next level of support. Well, on a 30-minute chart out here, the only level of support would be this morning's lows at 8.30. So if price does continue to move lower, that becomes the price target out there. I am not saying at this moment that that is what's going to happen. If we had a red oscillator and change line and price was through it, I would say that. But it's green. And therefore, we will not draw that conclusion. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be back shortly. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. 
David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, Brett, uh, folks. Uh, let's go out to uh, Martinez, California. Let's speak with Brent. Hey, Brent, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you doing today? How was your weekend? My uh, weekend was fantastic. Steve, I hope you're as well. I just uh, appreciate you taking the call. and great talking with you. Sure, my pleasure. And you want to take a look at Goldilocks out here and uh, tell us what you're doing, how I could best help you. What information can I provide to you? The main reason I was calling is because of your, your call on... Uh, Friday, yes. You did that early show, yes. And you made the comments. You know, we were kind of having that big moving gold after the, the jobs report, and you were yes, telling yes. people to kind of temper their enthusiasm a little bit. You know, just, just don't get too excited. <laughs> it could. Yes. Uh, I think we were in either bar eight or nine at that point. We were on uh, one of the shorter term uh, time frames, and I think it'd be worth going back and looking at that. Because that was a good, you know great call. You really caught that you know at the moment that. Sure. You said there's Thank a you. chance to you know it could be a pullback and it being a lot more than probably than most people thought. So I think it'd be worth looking at that again. Yes. So um, I will try to pull that up in a few moments. Uh, I had uh, uh, someone had just before you had called in, I got an email request to take a look at the yen. So I've been trying to open up my yen charts here and a couple of them are still downloading. And so I can't get back to that area. It, it should pop up momentarily. Uh, but. Uh, what was uh, what was what was happening on Friday? And that was pretty. That was pretty cool uh, to be able to just say to folks, "Hey, look, this is it's early morning. I know it looks like prices are taking off. Don't chase it." Here was really the message that I wanted to get out to folks because on that 30-minute time frame chart, it was forming that TD9. In fact, I should be able to pull that up now. So let me go back and grab that uh, for folks. Uh, if you give me just a moment here, Brent, and uh, gold contract and. Oh, don't. Okay, good. So here is the 30 minute time frame chart. We're going to put this up on our screen and we can see. So I was recording the show on Friday between eight and nine. And um, yeah, and right at nine o'clock, that was forming bar number eight. And so I, I, didn't, I don't recall what I said, but I, I'm sure that I would have said that uh, gold is likely to form some type of short term top between nine and ten. And in fact, bar number nine took place uh, at nine thirty. And then we saw price precipitately uh, pull back out there and it pulled right back to the uh, breakout level. Pretty amazing that it did that in just a couple of hours. So the, the cool thing was, is that it was just able to say, hey, folks, you know, these TD9, they don't, they don't always work. And so I, I would think if we listen, re-listen to the call, Brent, it would have also said, hey, identify that high 
whatever is the highest high, uh, whether it's bar eight, nine, or the bar following them. Because if prices does close above that, the other beauty portion of, of that pattern is that it just tells you about a very strong momentum move to the upside. And we've seen this a couple of different times recently where there's been some type of release of numbers. Sometimes it's employment, sometimes it's jobs, maybe it's CPI or something like that, where we've seen gold take off. So we've seen this pattern play out before on the intraday charts, just totally takes off and makes that TD9 count and it pulls back out there. So yeah, that happened and that was fun. It's always fun to do the intraday or the morning shows, especially when uh, we're seeing such a movement out there. Has it changed anything with regard to gold itself? And, and my answer is not really, although, you know, I love Tom's expression, Tom O'Brien's expression. If you can't bust them up, price will try to bust them down. Maybe that's its message. But really, when we look at what's gone on for the past five, six trading sessions out here, it's just been just a sideways move into consolidation with inside uh, the daily profile. It's got a valid bottom out here, which was... Uh, which was formed as a buy the D point back on September 1st. So um, I, that, that's really my observations. What, what say you, Brent? Oh, I just think that was a beautiful call. I'm sure you saved some people, at least uh, if nothing else, a little pain or potentially some money on that uh, observation. And yeah, it, it, was, it, it, the way you stated it was if it were to, you know, of course, and uh, if it just continued on upward, you know, without having a pause, and no, that would be a strong move, but that's not what happened. It was more in line with what you yeah. thought could potentially happen. There would be a pullback, and it ended up being a, a significant. It wasn't like it pulled back a couple of dollars or something. It gave back that entire move, so that was a good call. Well, you know, what we what we like to do around here, I mean, we're, we're, this is all one team. You know, I just get the privilege to have an hour to to, to really just kind of coordinate uh, this, you know, as we take a look at these markets, just take a look at technical patterns and the tools that, that I use out here to assist me with what the markets are doing. Uh, but we're all here to help each other, you know. And uh, so there are a lot of people that could have been taking a look at that gold move. We're thinking about, for example, getting into the mining sector, uh, seeing that take off. And so the purpose of throwing it out there was to just say, hey, be, this is not the time. Now, now, if the pattern fails and it keeps going higher, okay, then you've got that information. But really kind of like we started the show off with John today, I don't want to necessarily make a forecast. I want to understand where is it the battles take place. And when they do, if there's a failure or success, what does that mean? And I think that's the best thing that we can do. And right now with regard to gold, it's just in a consolidation sideways with a valid bottoming pattern. Now, the U.S. dollar index is not helping out a whole lot here. But, um, you know, it's not like uh, gold is backing off a ton, nor are the miners, uh, per se. So I interesting markets, for sure. No, it's just nice to see those tools when they do work. And, you know, of course, nothing works all the time. But that was a pretty nice example of that pattern playing yes. out. And just the way that, you know, again, it was nice that you could be on at that time to catch it and, and you know, go ahead Absolutely. and express that uh, that the potential that that could happen, and it sure did. So, <laughs> I appreciate that. Well, I think that. we're going to, I think we're going to try to, we're going to try to do that again this Friday. See if we can find uh, some markets that are going crazy and uh, figure out, you know, what they what they communicate to us. So for me, that's the most fun in doing the shows. We've been able to do it several times here recently. I think even in the equity markets, we had been looking at the NQ and was pulling right back and so forth. So yeah, I, I like I like doing that mostly because it helps people to see the tools actually work live anybody can be an expert on the history of a chart and go back and take a look at it and tell you why it did what it did right it's about being able to then though figure out okay if certain levels fail like in the case of gold if gold is able to bust through 1768 out here i mean that's going to be a very bullish message and that's what it was trying to do on friday as price was trading above it but we just can't jump the gun and assume that because it's trading above it and we realize it's just a daily time frame but that's what it's going to do come the end of the day but if price could close above the top of that uh, weekly profile what that would do is that would then pretty much signal, so 1768, that would, well, then the next level would be 1790. The real key area that gold needs to close above to suggest that it's back in its bullish ways is going to be 1790, and that's the center of its bearish structured weekly profile. We close above that, then, uh, then it's golden up to 1838. Not forever, folks, just up to the next resistance level. So that's well, what again, I see. Thanks so much, Steve, for your help and, and hey, you bet, Brent. observation on, on Friday. <laughs> that was Great to see that all take place and the way it played out. So have yourself Perfect. a great day. You too. And a great week, and, and hopefully I'll get to talk to you soon.
Thank you. That was Brett DeMartinez, California. And yeah, so, folks, we're planning on, on recording the show again this Friday from 8 to 9. So maybe together we'll be able to uh, do that as well. But in the meantime, Hector and the fuel injectors did write in and was asking about the yen. And so let's go ahead and get those charts up on the screen out. And this is going to be the multi time frame, eight panel charts that help us really understand what's going on for different time frames. Now, what I want you to really first focus on is the monthly chart. Granted, the month is not over. But if the month, the yen closes above 111.71 and it's trading above it right now, that tells us about a significant change in trend, meaning that the yen would be weakening, the U.S. dollar strengthening. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we're taking a look at the U.S. dollar, Japanese yen. We're doing that for uh, Hector. Uh, did I just delete that? Son of a gun. I did. So uh, hopefully you remember, I, you would take a look at that week, the monthly chart for the U.S. dollar, Japanese yen. It formed a nice TD nine count bottom out there. And as I take a look at the weekly, the daily charts, I mean, this thing is on fire, headed north. That also means it's getting weaker versus the U.S. dollar. So that's putting strength into the U.S. dollar index. Now, on the short-term time frame charts, a 30-minute and a 60-minute, you've got TD9 count patterns. On the 60-minute, price is going to need to close below 113.27 to suggest that it's a top that could pull back to 112.90 or maybe 112.76, its breakout level. Um, 
uh, it's the only time frames that I see any kind of a uh, top for it. Now, let me switch over now that I've deleted, accidentally deleted the monthly chart. Let's pull back and let's see if we can try to figure out where maybe where price is going to. We'll do that using the black background charts out here. And again, I'm just going to go back to the monthly time frame versus trying to figure out an interday type signal out here. So here on the monthly time frame, price is also above the top of its profile. So we notice that price was above its TD9 breakdown level. This suggests that the yen is going to go target its prior highs, not that much further higher back in October of 2018, and that was in the 114.55 level. If price get above that, then price should seek out the highs of about 118, and then above that, price would make its way all the way back to the 125 level back from June of 2015. Uh, we can see a very large consolidation that's going on here, but the yen is on fire. And Hector's question was, does that foretell something else inside one of the markets, gold, the uh, um, you know the uh, stock markets and so forth. And since we haven't seen that same kind of move, I would say in any of those markets, Hector, I'm just going to have to say no. Just you would be trading the yen on its own and only focused on the yen there. Lastly, there was a question to go take a look at Mavis M V I S. Let me see if I can get the chart out here real quickly before we go to uh, before the show concludes, which is about 15 seconds. So I don't know if I'm going to have the time to do that. I'm trying. I'm trying. And, uh, well, let me see if I can get Mavis out here on this chart. MVI. Doesn't look like I'll be able to do it in time. Folks, uh, stay tuned. You've got two more great hours up next. Uh, David White and Tom O'Brien. I'll be back with you tomorrow on Terrific Tuesday. Take care, folks. <laughs>